फ्रेंड्स इन दिस क्लास वी विल कंटिन्यू विद द कीनिशियन थियोरी ऑफ इनकम डिटर्मिनेशन इन दिस क्लास आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दैट इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट मल्टीप्लायर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू राइट नोट्स फर्स्ट अबाउट इन्वेस्टमेंट मल्टीप्लायर देन थ्रू अ कैलकुलेटिव एग्जाम्पल वी विल लॉजिकली अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू डिराइव द फॉर्मूला फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट मल्टीप्लायर and then mathematically how to derive the same formula we will learn even that so some important concepts first followed by lots of calculative examples in today's class so let us not uh, waste any moment let us begin with the uh, notes writing part on this concept that is titled as the investment multiplier it refers to the phenomenon whereby a change in an injection of expenditure will lead to a proportionately larger change or multiplier changes in the equilibrium level of national income it explains how many times the equilibrium aggregate income increases as a result of an increase in autonomous investment it is calculated as k equals to delta y divided by delta i where k is the investment multiplier delta y is the change in income and delta i is the change in investment so as i told you just looking at these notes you will not be able to understand this concept you will require some background understanding and that we are going to do in a short while let us take that example through which we are going to understand this concept this example says determine the investment multiplier from the given below data what is given in this example if you check a is given as 1000 b is given as 0.6 and y is given as 10000 in case 1 and 20000 in case 2 so basically just this much informed and you are simply being asked to compute investment multiplier now initially this may appear to be little complicated but indeed it is not so how are we going to approach this kind of example if it is being asked to you how will you solve it simple thing if you have the two constants a and b available and if you have the variable y available you can explore the equation of c equals to a plus b into y that is the consumption function you determine the value of consumption through this through consumption you will be able to arrive at other factors like savings and finally you will be able to arrive at investment multiplier i am going to show you this calculation by taking different different approaches but most important thing over here is how logically we connect this information with investment multiplier that is worth understanding so what i will do is i'll explain this whole concept to you through this example let us see how to solve it we know that c equals to a plus b into y so in case 1 how will you find the value of c just substitute all the values that are available a is given as 1000 b is given as a ratio that is 0.6 and y is given separately for case 1 and separately for case 2 so case 1 c will be 1000 plus 0.6 into 10000 so 0.6 into 10000 will give you 6000 plus 1000 will make it 7000 and in case 2 the value of c would come to 13000 now look at one thing what is the change in your consumption over case 1 and case 2 when compared from case 1 to case 2 your consumption is increasing from 7000 to 13000 so the change in consumption that is denoted as delta c will be 13000 minus 7000 that is 6000 and what was the change in income delta y indicates the change in income and that will be 20000 minus 10000 that was 10000 let us move ahead and continue writing further now we know one thing the constant value b indicates a ratio which is mpc that is marginal propensity to consume and how do we compute that it is delta c divided by delta y that is change in consumption divided by change in income and that will be 6000 by 10000 correct and that comes to exactly 0.6 
in fact this was already given in the question we have just connected the equation b equals to delta c divided by delta y over here now if b is the marginal propensity to consume 1 minus b will give you mps that is the marginal propensity to save simple logic is if the economy is consuming 60 percent of its income it is implied that they will be saving 40 percent of their income so if you want to compute the marginal propensity to save it will be simply 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume so 1 minus 0 0.6 will give you 0 0.4 so we will say marginal saving is 0 0.4 times of marginal income so if your marginal income was 10,000 your marginal savings will be 4,000 so you know one way to consider this could be that the marginal saving is 0 0.4 times of marginal income if you consider this on a reversal side what is the number of times that marginal income stands against marginal savings I would say simply take 10,000 divided by 4,000 and what you get is 2.5 times so I would say marginal income will be 1 divided by 0 0.4 that is 2.5 times of savings let us move ahead and now what we do is we just know one more thing that whatever is investment that is equal to savings now in an economy which is at equilibrium your investment will represent nothing but the total money that you have saved from where will you invest money tell me only from the money that you save and money that you save you are not going to keep it idle you are going to invest it so savings and investment will always be same now once you understand that savings and investment will be same what is the next thing that you need to follow in this case income is 2.5 times investment in other words when we have seen already that income in this example was 2.5 times of savings we can also call it income equals to 2.5 times investment now income is denoted by y your investment multiplier is 2.5 times that is denoted by k so k is the investment multiplier and the investment itself is i so the function that we get now is y equals to k into i that is k times i and k is nothing but the investment multiplier now how do we compute this investment multiplier observe one thing this 2.5 times how did we get we took inverse of 0 0.4 correct and what was 0 0.4 0 0.4 was the marginal propensity to save if marginal propensity to save is 0 0.4 inverse of that will become the investment multiplier so we can conclude that k equals to 1 divided by 1 minus b or 1 divided by 1 minus marginal propensity to consume or finally 1 divided by the marginal propensity to save so please write up this whole thing and that is what we have to conclude over here i am going to show you a straight way of computing this let me take you back to the same example now view this example on a different way what is given look at one thing we do not have any requirement to find the consumption over here right if you just want to find the investment multiplier look at the data given in this example you have been given the constant value b b is a ratio you know it right b is a ratio that is the marginal propensity to consume and that was already given as 0 0.6 if this much is known simply what you need to do is if marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.6 the marginal propensity to save will be 1 minus 0 0.6 that will be 0 0.4 and inverse of 0 0.4 will give you the investment multiplier that investment multiplier when multiplied to the investment it will give you the total amount of your income that is what we have to conclude so i am sure you have understood what exactly i wanted to convey over here now let us move ahead and understand the mathematical derivation of the same 
So, derivation of investment multiplier we have observed k equals to delta y divided by delta i and this was one of the equation that we have understood. Now, since y equals to c plus i this is the income which is aggregate of consumption plus investment. One more thing let me explain c stands for consumption. So, out of the total income there will be some amount of money that you will consume and some amount of money that you will invest correct. So, consumption plus investment will always make it your total income. So, if I conclude one thing that what will be happening when your income changes the change in income that is delta y will be equal to change in consumption that is delta c plus change in investment that is delta i. So, if delta y equals to delta c plus delta i what will be the value of delta i? Delta i will be delta y minus delta c. Now, if you substitute the value of delta i in this first equation what you will get? You will be getting k equals to delta y divided by delta y minus delta c. Look at this in the numerator delta y remains as it is in the denominator in place of delta i we have taken the value of delta i as delta y minus delta c and now by taking delta y as common what you find if you take delta y as common in the numerator what you will get is just 1 correct if you are taking delta y as common in the numerator you will get 1 in the denominator you will get 1 minus but from delta c if you are taking delta y as common outside the bracket you know you will get a fraction that will be delta c divided by delta y. Let me show it to you if I modify this I can rewrite the same thing this way and look at this mathematically there is no change at all. Let me prove it to you delta y in the numerator as it is now look at this delta y into 1 will give you delta y which was over here and delta y into delta c by delta y delta y delta y will get cancelled and this delta c with a negative sign will come over here. That means mathematically this expression on the right hand side and this expression on the right hand side are same and because we have taken delta y as common we can now cancel delta y from the numerator as well as denominator. Once we cancel this what we get as the revised value of k k will be obtained as 1 divided by 1 minus delta c by delta y. Now, you know one thing delta c by delta y is nothing but change in consumption by change in income and that is denoted as the marginal propensity to consume. So, finally, we can conclude that the value of k will be 1 by 1 minus mpc or we can write as 1 divided by mps that is inverse of marginal propensity to save or we can say inverse of 1 minus marginal propensity to consume that will be the value of investment multiplier. I have earlier shown you a logical derivation this is a mathematical derivation. Let us have one more derivation understood over here. So, we know one thing y equals to c plus i and this I am considering as equation 1. We know that c itself is a plus b into y if we substitute this value of c over here in this first equation what we would get we would say by substituting value of c in equation 1 we will be getting y equals to a plus b into y plus i bar this i bar is nothing but the same i but here i bar is indicated as autonomous investment that means the amount of investment that is a kind of a mandate upon you that much investment is required you cannot avoid that investment it is unavoidable kind of investment. You remember what was this small constant a this was basically the minimum level of consumption correct the minimum amount of consumption where even if you are not earning any income you will have to consume this much. Likewise there will be some investment expenditure particularly spent by the business sector in order for the business to survive if you need to purchase a machinery you will have to purchase a machinery. So, when I say i bar it actually becomes an autonomous consumption. So, when I 
solve this equation you know this is the term with the variable y that is b into y if I shift b into y to the left hand side it will become minus b into y. So, I get in the left hand side y minus b into y equals to a plus i bar. So, when I take y common in the left hand side what I get 1 minus b multiplied to y equals to a plus i bar and finally, when I find the value of y I get y equals to a plus i bar divided by 1 minus b and we can write it this way y equals to a plus i bar into 1 divided by 1 minus b. If you observe this part clearly 1 divided by 1 minus b was nothing but the investment multiplier. In other words when investment multiplier is multiplied to a plus i bar what you will get eventually is the total amount of income that is the derivation that I wanted you to understand over here.